but there's also a, a very sociable aspect to this place as well. Yeah. Which, um, which is really good. Now, you know, I spend a fair bit of time here, particularly since COVID. Yeah. Um, prior to COVID, I had uh, I was working part time, so I was spending maybe about two or three days, maybe two hours a day up here. Then I'm probably spending a lot more now because of COVID and whatever, not being not working. How did you find it throughout COVID when everything was kind of shut down? No, and you weren't was, able to. It was, it was a pain because I think the first lockdown was March. March, that's right, yeah. And things start to kick off. You're sort of you're you're deciding what you're going to do. Yeah. You're going to be putting, bringing on seeds in the poly tunnel and all this sort of thing. So there was, there was a major flap to get the potatoes into the ground before we locked down. Right. And I was lucky enough that I got my potatoes down uh, just before the lockdown. And um, I had stuff in the poly tunnel that I was fretting about uh. <laughs> when, I, when I wasn't here for the best part of two months, I'd say, maybe more. Yeah. And um, actually Roddy, who's got the allotment, two allotments down, Roddy, yeah, we were gonna have a chat. We were gonna try yeah. and grab Roddy as well the next time he comes in. Well, Roddy, Roddy, actually, we were, we were doing a thing with Nationwide last year. Yes. And oh, that's right. Jim was on Nationwide. Yeah. <laughs> you all remember him. <laughs> and we were talking to the lady, and he, she was asking about lockdown and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And then they reopening, and we were given a date, and he said it was like a reminder of when he was a child waiting for Christmas to come. Right. And that was the way he was in the relation to this place reopening. So. And you mentioned the social aspect yeah. of um, having an allotment in here. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, obviously, I didn't know anybody. I, I, the only guy that I knew when I came here was the guy that I was sharing it with. Yeah. And um, then he left, and then I started to... Actually, how you start to really make friends with people is that you're asking advice, they're giving advice, yeah. and that develops then into a, into a real social thing here. Um, you have lovely areas where you can go and have a coffee. You can go into the ornamental garden, have a coffee with a few of your pals. Um, but there is a very, very social social aspect to it. I was just Neil Murray, who was down at the very end. He was. Um, I was here yesterday evening. He came up, and we just sat on the bench and had a had a know, chat. Okay, I'll put it to you this way. Yeah, yeah. If you say that you're going to come up to Festina for an hour, yeah. you could be here for two or three. Hours. Right. Well, there you go. That's the way, that's <laughs> the way to actually frame it, and that's that's typical of my day. And, in, um, in Festina. How often would you be here, Jim? Pre-COVID, maybe twice, or th- yeah, maybe three times a week, maybe two or three hours a day. But right. Since then, I'm probably That's substantial that. amount still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But since um, since COVID and since we reopened, yeah, we're probably here, depending on the time of the year, obviously from March to uh, September, we'll yeah. be busy enough time. And, you've, and maybe into October, November, December, January, but slow enough for much you wouldn't go up yeah. But typically, I'm up here every day. I'd say. And also, question because I always wonder this when people take on allotments. Like when you started with the allotment, did you know much about no. allotments and gardening? No. So did you literally start from scratch I then? Started from scratch. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, and also that's and that's the point I was making about mm. the people. The likes of Roddy and Dennis, who have been here a lot longer. Yeah, these are good and, pals, all of you now. They're good pals, yeah. and they, they set you in the right, on the right path. Yeah. And, you know, then you find yourself doing that to people who come in after you, you know, so. Did you find it hard to get the knack of it? Mm, I wouldn't <laughs> say I have green fingers. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say I have. Do you think you have now, though? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that, no. But um, I certainly know a lot more than I did. And... Um, I'm, I'm probably I'm curious about things. Yeah. I'm curious about things, and I like to do a, bit, a little bit of research. Yeah. On what you're going to, going to put into the ground, it's very important from my point of view that what you put into the ground that you eat. Yeah, absolutely. Of waste. Yeah. You know, and you can see, and, and if you're not careful, you could you could have a lot of waste if you don't plan things. Tell us what you have growing here now at the moment. Okay, so along here. Right. What we have is we have two lines of parsnips. Yes, it's very neat. Yeah. Very and in neat. between the parsnips, you have spring onions. Right. And then you've got a line of two lines of carrots. These are the, the yeah, lines. These carrots. here. Yeah. And then on the far side, these are shallots. Okay. And surrounding it, then you have marigolds. So the theory behind that is yeah. The theory behind that is that the carrots and the parsnips are susceptible to the carrot fly. Okay. The carrot fly can decimate your crop. Right. So basically. There's a thing called companion planting where if you um, plant the likes of uh, shallots, spring onions, garlic, whatever, 
and marigolds, the actual theory is that the scent of those will distract the car fly from the carrots and the plants. Right. And that's the thing. So the method to it. Yeah. Now, whether it works in practice, I will tell you in about <laughs> two months' time. Yeah. But that is the, that is the theory. So, um, and then I've got my spuds. Obviously, everybody does spuds. These are all spuds. See, I yeah. wouldn't know that because I have no experience all with right, it. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's an historical thing or whatever. But, you know, so these are all spuds here? All spuds, yeah. I have four Kay. lines of spuds here. And, right. um, and this is where, I mean, when I start now, first, I thought a spud was a spud. Yeah. But a spud isn't just a spud. You've got first earlies, which are these ones here, which we would buy in the shops as uh, new potatoes. Okay. Okay. And typically, potatoes in Ireland would be put in around St. Patrick's Day. Okay. And with the first earlies, they're the new potatoes, they will be ready to harvest in 12 weeks' time. And they're the nice little spuds that you get right. in your fruit and bread shop. And then the second earlies, which would be a little bit later, you'd harvest them maybe about a month later than the first earlies. And these are British queens. And these are a beautiful potato. Really nice potato, nice and flowery. What's your favourite potato? I think British queens would be, actually, because I, I only started last year doing British queens, and they are really nice. Really, really nice today. Uh, Sharps Express are the first earlies, and Sharps Express would be a salad potato. They wouldn't be flowery. Okay. Um, but very nice. And then Roddy, my pal, just two doors down, two rockers down. Yeah. Hey, Helen, how you doing? Um, <laughs> these are a potato called Belle de Font. No, sorry, not Belle de Font. No. Pink fur apples. Pink? Fur, F I O. Okay. Apples. Okay. And that's the land. They are the main crop. So the main crop, so basically early, first early, second early, and the main crop, and they wouldn't typically harvest it till maybe the end of August. Okay. So they're the supposed Now, I would never have known that at all until I started to come up here and started to grow my own stuff. Brilliant. What's your favourite um, vegetable to grow? I like growing salads. Yes, Sal for okay. For some reason. The different varieties, I think they look well in the ground. If you get them, on these the are yours as well, are they? Yeah, yeah. I'll have a couple of them over here as well. Oh, yeah, Adam. If you get them in a, I like to get them in a straight line, nice and neat. I They're like super them. neat, like yeah. <laughs> you have different colors, yeah. You know, and sometimes I sort of have green, red, green, red, and whatever, you know. But yeah, I like as you can see, there are. There are five different varieties, so maybe there's six, maybe different. What are the different types that are there, just for okay, people who wouldn't know? so basically what you have are a lot of rosa. Yeah. You've got uh, the typical one that you would buy in the um, in your vegetable shop, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it'll come to it. This is a, uh, a lettuce called... Now, you're putting me in the spot here. Oh, don't worry about it, we can no, come back to it anyway. Spot. This is a cost lettuce. Yeah. This is a cost lettuce. This is Skilton. Okay. That's the name, that's the variety, Skilton. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a red, cost like lettuce called Moon Red. Okay. And uh, these two here are Little Gem. Those are the ones in the supermarket. <laughs> so basically, you have Little Gem, you've got Moon Red, you've got Skilton, you've mm -hmm. got a cost like lettuce here, you've got the Lana Rossa, you have more Little Gems coming along here. And um, yeah, so that's what I like doing. Have. And what's all this here? Okay, so basically what you have there, you have Excuse me. dwarf French beans. Now okay. It looks a little bit cluttered at the, mo at the moment. And the reason for that is, is that I intercropped okay. in between. So basically I have t three lines of the dwarf French beans, but in between each one I've got radishes. Okay. And these are called catch crops. So you can grow them in between other vegetables that will take a little bit longer to grow. Okay. Radishes are quite quick to grow, so that's what they are. Tomato plant beside you there. Try to grow, try to do tomatoes. How are you, Deirdre? Hello. <laughs> try to do... Um... Are you on telly? <laughs> <laughs> try to grow tomatoes outdoors in Ireland was a challenge. Yeah. And um, actually, Roddy gave me that, my neighbour gave me that, so... It'd be interesting to see how it develops. I wouldn't be too confident. Why? Um, some marigolds here that I'm going to put into the ground. They should be in the ground a long time ago. I brought those on myself in the polytunnel from seed. Lovely. Um, this here is I have three of these plants in the ground, and they are 
Brokali, B-R-O-K-A-L-I, and they are across between um, broccoli and Chinese kale. Oh, wow. Uh, but they didn't do well. They went to seed very early. Right. I should have a lot more florets see here. Yeah. See, like here, they should be tight. Like you a know, little broccoli, like broccoli florets, yeah. yeah. But they went to, they started flowering about a month ago, so maybe I put them in too early. Okay. Strawberries are um, are doing really well. A really good harvest of strawberries this year. Nice. Um, and then we've got, I've surrounded them with, um, what do you call them? You know these big flowers? Sunflowers. Sunflowers. <laughs> and um, it's like probably the only thing I could guess in yeah, the garden. Fair play to you, Andrea. <laughs> you know a little bit more than you thought. It's because sunflowers are my favourite flowers. <laughs> so, um, that's it. I'm, I'm sort of I'm going to regenerate this little patch over here. Yeah. And uh, put, in, put in a bit of fresh compost and that sort of thing into it. And I'll put some spring onions in here. Yeah. And maybe a few more heads of lettuce. Lovely. <laughs> I like your uh, your colour coordination going on there, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's brilliant. Oh, so that's it. oh, I've got some gherkins here. Yeah. Small cucumbers. Your fridge must be full of lovely fresh food. Well, I give away a lot. Do you? I give away a lot, yeah. Let me give away a lot of neighbours. People walking through here, they might be sort of admiring your allotment. Yeah. I'll be in for my bag of veg. <laughs> I'll be in for my yeah, bag of veg. That's quite okay. That's no problem. <laughs> but that's what happens. You know, you people would be admiring or just talk to you about your allotment. Yeah. And you'd give them a head of letter, so maybe a few spoons or whatever, you know. So, Bob, yeah. thank you so much for having a chat with us. Thank really you. appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks a million. No problem. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.